Thank you, gentlemen. Chair now recognizes the gentleman from Nebraska, General Bacon, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I can't think of a more important topic for our first hearing, so I appreciate the focus. It seems to me that deterrence in Taiwan is our, should be one of our top national security priorities, because day one of the war, is, it's too late. And I hear a lot of talk from the administration. I don't know that I see the action, you know, that's equating to the talk that we have. We have a huge backlog in weapons that I read about. It seems to me they should be getting harpoons, long-range air defense, anti-shipping mines, and so forth. Uh, so my question to both of our great panelists, and thank you for being here today, are we seeing the right sense of urgency from this administration when it comes to Taiwan? Admiral Harris, you first, please. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to get into the business of, uh, uh, of um, discussing uh, the, the administ this administration's view as opposed to the last administration's or any others. I'll just uh, observe that over the course of the last 20 or 30 years, we have not done enough for Taiwan writ large across all administrations. We have not done enough uh, given the threat that Taiwan faces and given the fact that that, uh, that we have put Taiwan in this, uh, in this place. And we're seeing the PRC uh, systematically attack uh, Taiwan's foreign relations, such that their list of countries that recognize them uh, is dwindling. Of course, we led that way uh, in, the, in the 1970s. Uh, but I think we have the right sight picture on Taiwan now. Uh, I think we've had that now for sure from the previous administration and into this administration, as I mentioned in my remarks, Secretary Blinken and, and his view and, and Secretary Austin and his view. Uh, I, there is still far more that we could do with Taiwan. And, and, and most of it is tied up not in law where, where you've, you all are, are behind, uh, but in policy. And, and I think it's those policy things that, that if we could get uh, through those, then we would have, uh, we would be in a better place uh, and Taiwan would be in a much better place to defend itself. I mean, isn't that what we really want? We want them to fight and die for their country, not us to fight and die for their country. I want to give Dr. Susan a chance, but I just want to say we have billions and billions of dollars in backlog weapons. And there's a lot of these, these policy discussions, but the, action is, the actions are not going on that, that we need to see. Dr. Susan. I think we do need to move with seriousness, but not in a way that's overreactive. We don't want to heighten tensions uh, by over-militarizing the way in which that we engage with Taiwan right now. I think the Admiral is correct to point out that there are any number of important other ways that we can support Taiwan in the international system that are very important to deterrence. Okay. Thank you. And I, I heard the same thing for the administration when it came to Ukraine, though. They didn't want to provoke Russia. So I'm a, I would rather move with expediency to give Taiwan what they need to defend themselves. Uh, my second question is, I think we need a, a more holistic policy when it comes to China. Uh, there's a lot of different aspects to our policy, you know, whether it's predatory trade, the theft of our technology, the genocide with the Uyghurs, the not denial of democracy in Hong, Hong Kong, the threat to uh, Taiwan, the buying of access in our institutions in America. We need a comprehensive policy that looks at all of this. Is it your view that we right now have a comprehensive policy with China. Uh, Admiral Harris. Yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, I don't think we have that comprehensive policy, but I think we're much further along now in 2023 than we have ever been. I used to talk about uh, during the Cold War with the Soviet Union, uh, almost every branch of the U.S. government understood that the Soviet Union was the threat. You know, you, you know I used to joke, even a park ranger, a smoky bear would tell you, that, that the Soviets were the bad guys. We didn't have that comprehensive, unified view of the PRC. Uh, you know, State Department looked at it as a negotiation, DOD looked at it as a, um, uh, as a military operation, Commerce looked at it uh, as a trading partner, uh, and, uh, uh, and Treasury looked at it as a lender. So we didn't have this unified view across the government. But I think now we, we're getting to that unified view. And I think the Congress has a lot to do, has a lot to do uh, has done a lot, rather, to get us in that position. Thank you, Admiral. And with the 35 seconds left, I'll turn the rest of the time to Dr. Sisson. 
Thank you. Yeah, I will, I will use it briefly to wholeheartedly agree with what the Admiral has said and point out also that in addition to the external levers and mechanisms of addressing the strategic activities of the CCP, we also are seeing much more progress looking internally and the things that we need to do domestically to position the United States to be able to use all of the sources of, of national power. So I think we're not all the way there, but the direction of travel is good. My thanks to you both. I